China, Russia, and white supremacists are some of the biggest threats to the country, according to a new report from the Department of Homeland Security. The DHS conducted its first-ever homeland threat assessment, which was first obtained by CBS News. It aims to educate the public on the most significant threats facing the U.S. CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge broke this story, and she joins me now from Washington. Uh, Catherine, this is such an important story, especially given the level of uncertainty that we are all experiencing right now. Let's start with China. It is identified as the most persistent and pervasive threat. The DHS report uh, says that China is trying to exploit vulnerabilities in the U.S. supply chain. Tell us more about that. Well, Lane, one of the conclusions of this Homeland Security Threat Assessment is that the threat posed by China is multifaceted, so it's happening on many different levels. And one of the areas they cite is supply chain security. We've seen shortages globally, especially in the early days of the pandemic, because COVID-19 upset, disrupt, disrupted the supply chain. And what the report found is that China has been hoarding medical supplies as well as PPE, personal protective equipment, in the event that in the future they could use it as leverage if there is a second and sustained wave of COVID-19. So they do it for strategic reasons, Elaine. Yeah, how does this relate to China's attempt to mm -hmm. influence U.S. policy? Mm -hmm. Remember I said China's approach to the United States from a national security perspective is multifaceted. So another facet of the strategy is to not only look at supply chain, but then to also steal information and launch what are effectively influence operations. And that's what they call soft power in the national security space. So they build relationships with American businesses, they lobby American businesses, and then they use those relationships as leverage to change U.S. foreign policy so that it's more favorable to China and its objectives. Well, the assessment also mm -hmm. highlights China's growing cyber mm -hmm. attack capabilities. Mm -hmm. What kind of cyber threats is DHS mm -hmm. closely monitoring? Well, what we've seen recently is China has gone after research and development that's been developed in the United States at great expense on COVID-19 and especially vaccines. And if I was going to sum it up for you, Elaine, what the report says is that China is a major data collector. They're stealing information not only about research and development, but they're stealing information about American citizens. So whether it's health records, security clearance application, something called an SF-86, or your credit reporting. And they take this mountain of data and they create like a mosaic or a composite of your life. So it gives them a number of options. They can effectively steal your identity and masquerade as you. But more importantly, they can understand where you may be compromised, where you may, where you may be vulnerable, and how they may be able to co-opt you to carry out policies or actions that are positive and favorable to China and against U.S. interests. Wow. Well, last month, mm -hmm. a whistleblower alleged the mm -hmm. DHS downplayed Russia's threat mm -hmm. to the U.S. But what did this new report find? Well, we also spoke with the acting secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, and he answered those allegations by saying that he had seen the complaints. But if you look at the report, Russia is mentioned about 30 or 40 times, specifically about areas like election interference and efforts to sway voters. And he said, if you read the report, you will see there was no effort to downplay the importance of Russia. But the bottom line is that not only Homeland Security, but really the intelligence community writ large in the United States really sees China as the most aggressive and per pervasive threat targeting the United States, again, because, as I mentioned, it's multifaceted. Some of it is covert, so it's in the shadows, and then some of it is more overt, so in the light. Well, the report also mm -hmm. identifies white supremacists as the, quote, mm -hmm. most persistent and right. lethal threat of all domestic violent mm -hmm. extremist groups. What makes these groups so dangerous? 
Well, one of the things that's fascinating to me, uh, Elaine, having covered this area now for two decades, is when you look at this issue of homegrown extremists and self-radicalization, and you see the same mechanisms with al-Qaeda and ISIS that we're now seeing with these extremist groups in the United States. And the Homeland Security Threat Assessment found that white supremacists are by far the most lethal of these groups, but it also argues that there's a broader context, and it calls out anarchist groups as well, and it says you need to also look at the ripple effect of the destruction that they've caused, whether it's attacking federal buildings, uh, disrupting businesses, and the implications of that for ordinary Americans. Interesting. Well, DHS mm -hmm. did not focus on groups like al-Qaeda and ISIS mm -hmm. in its assessment. That's right. But should they still be on our radar? You know, that's one of the striking things about the assessment is that Homeland Security was begun effectively in October of 2001. I came here to Washington to cover the first Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Ridge, and at the heart of the whole concept was al-Qaeda and disrupting domestic terror plots inside the United States. But what we've seen over the last two decades is this evolution, and you really have to dig deep down into the report to find references to al-Qaeda and ISIS. The department, make no mistake, remains committed to fighting, I'll say, traditional terrorism. But I think it's really a testament to how effectively, especially our special operations forces, have been able to really go after the leadership of these organizations and effectively sort of tamp them down and be able to restrain these operations and keep them outside of the United States like another 9-11. Yeah. Uh, finally, Catherine, what did Chad Wolf tell you about the actions his department is taking against all of these threats? Well, I think there was one note of warning that he told CBS News that in the days and weeks ahead with the election, there will be an effort by these nation states, so China, Russia, Iran, to sway American voters and to use uh, misinformation or disinformation. Uh, all of these efforts, he said, are designed to undermine confidence in the democratic process and to further divide Americans. And he urged the public to really remain patient as we approach the election and then specifically immediately after the election, because he said it could take days or maybe even weeks to know the ultimate result. And this should not be a period that is exploited by foreign nation states to undermine confidence in the democratic process. All right, Catherine Herridge, breaking that story for CBS News. Catherine, thank you so much. You're welcome.